I have a wine glass and I wet my finger and I rub it around the rim, it vibrates at a certain note. That note is the resonant frequency of this wine glass. So what would happen if we were to play that note back to this wine glass really, really loud? And yes, this is something you should not try at home. This note makes the glass vibrate the most. Finding the perfect note things vibrate best at is great for musical instruments, but it's not great for this wine glass. The sound waves are causing the glass to vibrate a lot. And because this glass is delicate, it can only vibrate so much before it breaks. The vibrations were so strong that the glass literally shook itself to pieces. <laughs> Science! Sorry. Science! So Michaela and I are going to max out sound. To do that, we need a maxed out sound system. <laughs> this is gonna be amazing. It's this so is gonna cool. be super maxed out sound experiment. I'm this is so James fun. McHale. Hey, James, James. Nice how are you? you? Thanks for coming, buddy. Nice to meet you. So, tell us about your speaker system. It looks a lot like a vehicle. <laughs> this is my audio van. It's got four 15-inch subwoofers in the back. It's got a whole bunch of power to power it, and I'm glad to be here to let you guys hear it today. Wow. Awesome. So if I have a speaker at home, the, like a little speaker like this, how many watts do you think that would be? Somewhere between 15 and 25. 15 and 25 watts, yes. And you've got 4,000. Yes. So that's a lot more. Yeah, quite a bit. And subwoofers, they play low notes. Yes. So is that better when you have a van like this? With a car audio van like this, you want to play low notes, like your house stereos, and that will play anything from 120 to 200 hertz. I'm playing 20 hertz to about 35 max for you guys today. So that's like a yeah. sort of rumble of thunder. Yes, very kind low. Of blah, 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 yeah. Where you really feel it, yes. like a train going past almost. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. So we get our hearing protection on and we try it out. I know what you're thinking. Phil, what's the point of having loud music if you can't really hear it? Because we've gone from listening to music to feeling it. <laughs> the sound waves are so strong that they have become a physical presence. Michaela's hair flies around because the air from the speakers is creating shock waves. The sound waves are so powerful, they move the air back and forth, which makes Michaela's hair dance all over the place. And my hair, not so much. <laughs> I'm totally jealous of your long hair. Yeah, you need to get longer hair. Okay, hold on, I'll go right Okay. Now. Whoa! <laughs> Science back, experiments at large, super, super sound. sound! High fives. Man, okay, ready to go again? So cool, yeah, let's do it. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Anthony and I are trying to generate electricity using human power. Spinning the generator didn't work too well. But we found if we used some gears, like those on a bike, it worked better. You know what we need is like one really hard pull, like all of a sudden. Using gears is a great way to get work done. The good news is there are generators with gears already in them. That means if we can turn the spindle once, the gears inside will spin the coil a lot of times. The only downside, turning the spindle gets harder the higher the gear. Anthony and I attach a spindle, and then we wind up the rope, which takes a while. Okay, so the plan is, it's on a big spool now, yeah. and you just run as fast as you can. Got it. And we'll hopefully get as many revolutions as we can, depending on how fast your top speed is. Okay, sounds I can good? Go, sounds good, I can be pretty quick. Okay, good, all right. Ready? On your mark. Uh-huh. Get set. Uh-huh. Go. <laughs> <laughs> How much electricity did they create? 
24 volts. Actually, not bad. That's enough to power their own personal scooter. Not too shabby, boys. We need like a hard pull all at once. Yeah, uh, something like really big. So what if we could get uh, like really high, like, okay. like up there? Could we attach the generator up there? You could jump down from there. Um, and I would hang on the rope? Yeah. Yeah, it's good, but I don't want to jump from up there. Um, oh, what if we put a pulley up there? That and then work. the rope goes through the pulley and then back down, and then I jump from somewhere much safer, like just on top of here onto a crash mat or something. That sounds great. And that's my full body weight on the, on the rope. That sounds great. All right, high fives. Yeah. Tidal power in 60 seconds. By now you know that in order to create electricity, you need to spin a generator. Scientists and engineers are always coming up with lots of new ways to use natural forces of the Earth to spin a generator and create electricity. One of those natural forces... One of those natural forces is the power of the tides. You see, the water in the oceans doesn't stay still. Every few hours, the water, or the tide, goes out. And then a few hours later, it comes back in. So, if you attach a paddle wheel in the water and attach that to a generator, when the tide goes out, it creates electricity. When the tide comes back in, it creates electricity. That is how you create electricity using the power of the tides. It's water power. In fact, hydroelectricity is also using water power. Do we have, do we have time to talk about hydroelect... We don't have time? We, we don't. Okay, maybe come back, come back. Hydroelectric power in 20 seconds. 20 seconds? Uh, okay, hydroelectricity comes from water. Hydro means water. So all you have to do is find a place where water pours down from a height. And you can put a generator in there, and ta-da, you're creating electricity with the power of hydro. Ha 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 ha, ha ha ha, I did it. Anthony and I have pulled and pedaled, and now we're going to hang on to the rope and use our whole body weight to spin the generator as fast as possible. Okay. Okay. Crash mat. Uh-huh. Let me test it out. Looks good? Yep, it's good for crashing. So I go up here? Uh-huh. Okay, I go up here. Climb on up. We'll get you the rope. Got your helmet for safety. Helmet for safety, crash mat for safety. So we have the rope, and it goes up through that pulley, and then back down to our generator right. with a spindle on it. And as I fall, that spindle will turn. Exactly. And hopefully the speed of me falling and holding and yanking it down as hard as I can will be the biggest spike of electricity yet. That's right. We'll be measuring it on our multimeter. Here. OK. OK. Ready? You ready? Yeah. Here we go. Three, two, one. I jump down, and my whole body weight pulls on the line. <sighs> Our biggest spike ever, that was amazing. All right, high fives, yeah. biggest spike ever. Is it enough to power my house? Nope. How much electricity did Phil generate? Almost 30 volts. How much does he need to power his house? 120 volts. He's still off by quite a bit. Well, we've learned something. Nuclear, uh, wind, hydro, uh, solar, natural gas, coal power. It's all great ways to generate electricity. Yeah. And human power. Not so much. Not as good, no. but human power is more fun. Yeah, way more fun. Yeah, so you, your turn? Yes! Okay, okay, give me, give me, you take me. the helmet and I'll take the multimeter. Okay. And then we'll go and we'll do it again. Okay, okay. But Heather and I are building a larger electromagnet. An electromagnet works like this. When an electric current is traveling through a wire, it creates a magnetic field. If you wrap that wire around something ferromagnetic, that's something made out of a metal that is attracted to magnets, like an iron nail, then it becomes a magnet. You can make a magnet stronger by wrapping more wire, which gives more distance for the current to travel, increasing the magnetic field, and you can also increase the strength of the current. Heather and I start with a coil of 30 meters of wire and start wrapping and wrapping, and wrapping. There, the wire is now all done. And remember, if you're doing this at home, do not use a drill unless you have an adult to help you out because drills can be very dangerous. This one goes at a very slow speed, so it was okay. But yes, definitely an adult supervised activity. Then we attach another on-off switch and make some leads that connect to a 12 volt battery. So, more wraps of wire and more current means the electromagnet should be stronger. 
Okay, so we're gonna try this electromagnet and we're gonna pick up this stuff right here. Great. Ready? You ready? Yeah. Three, Three two, two, one, one go! Is it on? Yeah, yeah. Wow, it really does, you can't tell that it's on, but. No, but bring it closer and. Oh yeah, look at that. Okay, Not we turn that. it off. All right. <laughs> Let's see if this nail can pick up this nail. All right. Ready? 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 Go. Uh, 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 oh. Okay, how about this side? Oh, no. Uh, no. Mm, I don't think it's, we're strong enough. It's not strong enough. I I think that we need to max this out uh, even more. Even more? Right. Um, so I'm thinking there are a lot of appliances that use electromagnets, meaning it's already set up, it already has tightly wound coils and high voltage, so... We're in a lab here. Maybe do you have old yeah. uh, appliances around? I have I have parts bins with a whole bunch of stuff. Maybe oh. we could find some electromagnets in those. Let's do it. Okay, great. Yeah. Let's go. So now we're searching for parts that came out of an appliance that are pre-built electromagnets. What about this? I think that'll do the trick. Do you think this is an, this is that does look like an electromagnet? Huh? It does. Yeah. And there's a whole big bunch of of copper wires coiled, coiled on that. Coiled around. So you think we can use this? Yeah, let's try it. Okay, great. We built the next version of the electromagnet. This one already has the copper coils, so it's just a matter of attaching wires and an on-off switch, and attaching all of it to a 12-volt battery. Do you think 12 volts will be enough? Let's find out, I think so. Try that. Once we do, Ooh. it works much oh, better. Oh, no problem at all. Ready? Yep, turn it on. On. Whoa, Whoa. pretty good. <laughs> okay, off. off. Neat. In case it was really strong, I have the next step. Horseshoe! Okay. Ready? Oh, whoa! That's... Here. I can't pull that off. I... Okay, wait, we'll grab this. Okay? Work together. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So that's passed all of our tests. Yeah. This is really strong. Um, so what are we, we to test it further? In order to test how strong our magnet is, it's as easy as seeing how much weight it'll lift. Heather and I find a metal table. All right, Phil, so I brought the electromagnet. Okay. Just put it right here. Yep. We add some sandbags for more weight and then attach a scale so we can measure how much weight we're lifting. We use a chain hoist, a simple machine made for lifting heavy things. This one can hold up to 454 kilograms. Want to turn it on? We're ready? Yep. Here we go. You can read on the scale how much weight is being lifted. And that scale is going up. Pounds on this side, kilograms on this side. We keep lifting until... Oh! oh, okay, so how much did it hold? It held 100 kilograms. Oh, that's more than I weigh, which gives me an idea. Come on. All right, you ready? Let's do it. Electromagnets, super max out experiment. We've got... Two electromagnets, one, two. And those are wired to two batteries, which are on my belt, just like this, so that I can carry them around. And we've got a crash mat here because... We need to keep you safe because you're gonna be using these electromagnets to get across this massive beam above us. That's right, I'm gonna stick to this metal beam and go across with the electromagnets, wow. we, we hope. I, I have faith. I, I'm glad you do. <laughs> I've got a helmet for safety, goggles for safety, gloves for safety, but in this case, sometimes a lab coat is more safe and sometimes it's less safe. This time, it will get all caught up, so no, no lab coat. All right, you ready to go? I'm ready, let's do it. Okay. Oh my goodness. What? Okay. Because each of our electromagnets can hold more than my whole body weight, I can use them to cross the beam. When they're on, they stick like, well, magnets. And when I turn them off, they stop being magnets and I can move them along as I go. Now, this is something you should definitely not try at home. Come on, Phil. You're almost there. Ah. <laughs> we did it. Yeah. There you go, Science Max, experiments at large, electromagnets. Woo. You want to go? No. You sure? I'm positive. Okay, <laughs> I'm going again.